everybody. So, okay. So yesterday we talked about all the tools that you need for successful hand applique. So now today we're going to talk about prepping your fabric and your applique. And tomorrow I plan on doing all the stitching. So I want you to join me tomorrow for stitching. And there's some real cool techniques that we can do for stitching. So we have the pattern. And on the back is template A and template B. So first thing you want to do is take a plain piece of paper. And I've drawn a seven and a half inch by seven and a half inch block on this paper. Now it says that you're supposed to cut your background six and a half inches by six and a half. So yesterday I said you always make your background larger. So I decided to make it seven and a half by seven and a half. So an inch all around bigger. So draw a seven and a half inch square. And what I did is I drew in my half inch on each side, top and bottom. And then I drew a diagonal line from corner to corner. Because I'm always about keeping things straight, especially when you have a dark applique on a light background. You don't want it to be crooked. I'm one of these people that if the picture's crooked on the wall, I have to straighten it. So you want to make sure that your heart is running on that perpendicular line. Okay. So I drew my line. Now I need to transfer this template onto my piece of paper and my circle. So the thing I love about applique is that I suggest where it should go, but I can put it wherever I want. I always think of it it as a guideline. There's really nowhere on here where it says where the circle has to go. But if I look at the first page here, it's kind of right up from the V point of the heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my heart so that the middle of my heart goes through my line I drew. So the best thing to do, two ways of doing this, I could take it to the window, tape it to the window. So I'm going to tape this to my window, put this over top, and transfer it. Okay. That's old style applique. Okay. Now I used a blue pen. Remember to not use pencil because you may inadvertently get the graphite on your fabric. Ask me how I know that. Or let's use our light box. Every good applicator, in other words, every applicator, should have one. And I love this one. Nice little button. And as I hold it, it gets brighter and brighter. We can see that pretty good, huh? Okay. So I put this down here. Now you can see the back from coming through, but from my perspective here, I can really see the heart. So if you want, because you don't want anything to move, put some tape. Now I'm using embroidery tape because I use it for everything. Oops. Turn it off at the same time. It's that advertisement. I put Frank's Red Hot and everything. So I'm going to line up my heart right on that perpendicular line. A little hard to see. How do I know that? <laughs> I should bring in some of my fail appliques where I actually used a black pigment, pig, pigma? can you pronounce that? Pigma marker on my background fabric. Yeah, it looks awful. So, I'm going to line up my heart so it goes directly through that line. I use my blue pen. Right. Trace it on. Now I want to put my template B on here. And this is the thing I love about applique. Kind of eyeball the center of it here. So 
totally know where it is, so I'm going to draw that on. Now this becomes, I use this as my pattern going forward. I never have to go back to refer to this to transfer any patterns. I like to have my pattern clear of noise, you know, pattern instructions. That way I know exactly what I'm doing. And you're going to do this for every block, and there's four of these in one big block. So a paper pattern is your best friend. Okay, I move my light box over. So now I have this transferred. So the first thing I want to do is transfer it on to my background. I did talk about the veil style of applique. I could transfer this onto my veil or directly onto my background. And I'm going to show you both of these. So I've already transferred this on, put my pattern on. A little bit of tape because what you don't want is it moving while you're transferring your pattern. I have found so many uses for embroidery tape. It's crazy. So we'll see that. Now this one I didn't cut at seven and a half because it's just a veil that sits over top. So usually what I like to do is I'll actually mark my corners. Remember this is a seven and a half inch. I'm going to be cutting my block down to six and a half. I like to mark my corners. It's a registration point. And remember to use your marker. This is the one for fabric. These are the ones I showed you yesterday. And now I'm going to transfer my heart. Make sure you haven't drank too much coffee, because then you'll have a okay, transfer it around, transfer it around. Perfect. And then what I do is I'm going to base this onto my background. This is one type of hand applique. Benefits with this type is that I'm not making any marks on my background fabric. It keeps it clean, which is really important when you're doing hand applique. I can place my applique, make sure it's right if it's a little crooked, as you'll see. I can just move that a bit around, and then I can go ahead and stitch it. So my sample, this is the class I taught, right? As you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me move this. You can see where I transferred it on, and I use a light box at home. Right? So I transfer the pattern on the veil. We used to use tulle where you know you use for wedding uh, wedding headdresses. This actually works much better, this pattern is, because you don't have holes in it and it's easier to transfer on. I just basted it, and now I'm ready to prepare my applique pieces. So that's one style of transferring it onto your background. Yes, pattern ease as the veil. This is the pattern ease that we use. I also use that when I'm teaching uh, sewing, that we transfer our pattern onto this and then you leave your tissue patterns. This is double wide stuff. It's amazing. You can do lots of stuff with this. And it's lightweight, non-woven, so you can actually see, I can see my hand through that. As long as you can see your pattern through that, you're good to go. Okay, let's talk about our next technique for transferring onto the background. Let's do it directly on the fabric. Now some people would probably be going, oh my gosh, don't do that. Well, some people don't want to do the veil. Now the veil is a very old technique, at least as old as me. 
So again, you need to tape it down so it doesn't move. When in doubt, tape. Now there's a couple of ways that I can transfer this on. So I talked about the friction pin, which will disappear when you iron on it. It doesn't come back in the freezer. Or I can use my pencil, my Soline pencil that I use with the veil. You decide which works. I'm all about how it fits in my hand. For this one, I'm actually just going to use the friction pin. So I have it lined up. And I'm within, you can see where I have my six and a half inch mark. So again, I'm going to put my corners in here. Now I've already put my Presto shear behind this. Very important. Now the reason I like Presto shear for stabilizer and hand applique is that it becomes one with the fabric. So you have that body you need to stitch with, and it provides support for your stitches. I have not used any other type of stabilizer, like a tear away or a cutaway. I've always used the Presto Shear. I like it because it becomes one with the fabric. Okay, so now I'm just going to transfer right onto my background. Now, you don't need to draw complete lines. I like doing a dotted line. And this is the part about hand applique I love, is transferring my patterns on the light box. To me, it reminds me of coloring. So there, I just did a dotted line. You don't necessarily have to do a complete line around. So if I turn this off, let's see. Hold it down and it dims. I just love doing that. There we go. Can we see my pattern? Let me bring this up. Oops. There we go. So I have now transferred this onto my background. So I have the two. One with the veil and the one where I transferred right onto the background. Okay, so let me just put this over here for now. Now we're going to talk about doing our applique pieces. You know, the other beautiful thing about this light box, look how thin that is. Where the old-fashioned ones where we had light bulbs in it, got really hot, sometimes they would actually burn in there. These are really light, they're wafer thin, so they don't get hot. And they're actually very easy, they're very lightweight. And they actually have inches and, mil and uh, centimeters on here. So it's really easy to square up. So this goes to 12 and a half by 9, which is a great size. Okay, so now we're going to talk about doing our pieces. So, where's my heart go? So now I want to transfer this on to my freezer paper because I need to get this image onto my applique fabric. So uh, this one here, I just put here, I can put it back on the light box if I want, using my fabric pencil, trace it around, and this is on the paper side of the freezer paper. Okay. This is the waxy side. This is what's going to adhere to your fabric. Now, in this one here, I actually transferred the template on here, which did not work quite the way I wanted to. So I'm going to give you a couple of other options. So transfer your heart onto your freezer paper, and now we want to cut it out. And the nice thing about freezer paper is that I can use it a couple of times Probably I'm going to, might be able to get three times out of it before I have to trace a new one. Now if you want, you can trace this out of template, plastic, which I'm actually going to do for the circle. So now transfer that on. That looks pretty clean, nice and clean. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now I talked about template B here. A couple of ways of doing this. 
template. And the way I do my circles, I need something that can handle heat. This one's not as important for the heat. This is really important for using circles, heat, and I'm going to show you why in a little bit here. So I just transferred this on. So let's go ahead and do that. Now because I'm using plastic, my my fabric pencil is not going to work. I need to use my friction pen. Do not use a sharpie. They're just kind of going back and forth. So now I'm going to cut it out. So this is where you want to use general use scissors for it. So I'm just cutting it around, turning very slowly. And when you use template plastic, we could use this for quite a few circles. So typically how I prepare my applique objects or my applique pieces is I prepare all my pieces. Make sure I put them in a Ziploc bag because you'll lose one. And then you'll go make the second one that you thought you lost and then you find the first one. Right? So I have now cut out my circle. But you know what? I can tell that there's kind of rough edges. Nail file. So I'm going to take the nail file and I'm just going to gently do the edges. That makes it. I can feel where it's smooth. Just gently. And you can do this with any odd object that you have. Maybe it might be a leaf, it might be a flower bud. Something that when you cut out with your scissors, it's not smooth. Nail file. Now I'm using the uh, fine side of the nail, nail file. I just go around. So not just use the nail file to go around the edge. And now I have a really nice circle. Okay. So we've done that. Let's go ahead and do our heart. So I have my, I actually have two circles now. So here's my heart. Yeah. So I've lined it up on the center and right on the point of the heart. Now if you wanted to, you could have put that line that I drew on my block when you transferred these. You could have put that there, but you know what? I'm good with that. Now I put my freezer paper on top, on the right side, not the wrong side. That's the difference. So now I'm going to, my iron is hot. I don't need a lot of heat. My iron is really hot right now. Okay, so now I have let that cool. So I've now put my heart on there. So remember when we stitched our two strips together? Press open, key. So let's go ahead and we're going to cut this out. Now, some people would draw a line here. Maybe they need to draw the quarter inch in. I like it just under a quarter inch. You may want to do that just to make sure that you have an accurate seam allowance. My heart is now done. So what I would like to do, I want to do our little circle now. So here's what we're going to do. So do I want my little circle in the pink or the red? What did I do this one? Red. Let's do these in red. So now I'm going to put my template on the wrong side. I can draw around my template if I want. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. So I'm going to cut two. I have both the same because you can tell. Now I want to give myself enough room between here. Because I'm going to be cutting out each circle with my seam allowance. Now you're probably thinking, how am I going to get a circle? Am I going to be doing this? I'm going to show you a really cool trick. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a basting stitch all around the edge. 
So now I have run a basting stitch around the edge here. Now I can just cut, I want to leave a little tail long enough for me to pull it. Here's the magic. I'm going to put my template circle in there. And now I'm going to pull on my two ends. Look at that! A perfect circle! Woohoo! There you go. So, now that I've pulled this, make sure I've distributed my ease. Let's quickly take it over to the iron. Oh, that's my iron. It's right here. Okay, so now that I have pressed that in, I just want to make sure I've got a good crease on there. Let it cool. Always let it cool. I can feel it. Once it's cool, I'm just going to open it up. Slide it out. I'm ready to make my next circle. There we go. Perfect circle. How easy was that? Huh? Now, if you don't have template, I've used a piece of heavy weight. Uh, this is tearaway stabilizer. I cut that. I traced my template, cut it out. Now, it'll be easier to cut this out smoothly than it was the plastic. Same thing. Put it on the inside, run a gathering stitch, and you can iron this. You probably get maybe... I would say four circles out of this before you'd have to retrace it, as were my template plastic. I can probably use it for the entire table runner. So, we now have my circle ready. I will prep my heart tomorrow for you, and we're going to start stitching as well. So, tomorrow we'll be doing the prepared edge on this. The prepared edge is already done on this. And that's it for today. So anyways, oh, look who's coming. Oh, oh, I'm in trouble. No, I just came to say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Go ahead and say, <gasps> be kind, be kind, be kind. Be calm. Oh. And, and be, be safe. safe. Bye, see you tomorrow. <laughs>